Hey guys, I see that you're jumping on. Say hi. Hi, Dixie Bell. You guys jump on, say hi. Let me know where you're tuning in from. And we have enough viewers. I'm going to get started. So hi, um, happy Thursday. I'm Bianca, owner and artist of Lotus Theory Designs. I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint Company. And um, today's live probably isn't going to be very long because what I'm going to show you is pretty much quick, but fun. So um, what I started doing here, and this is what we're going to be working on, is I have a couple of nightstands that I put a couple of coats of Bunker Hill on. That's um, the blue that you see here. And I had a vision in mind, and that was to decoupage the drawer fronts. Um, decoupage is one of my favorite ways to go about adding design to a piece of furniture because it's easy and it's fun. So I went to my local craft store and um, one of the things that I love to do is uh, Joanne Fabrics. They have a really nice selection of just loose 12 by 12 scrapbook papers. And so I don't have to invest in like a huge roll of paper. I can pick up sheets of paper for relatively cheap. These were a little bit more expensive. Um, because they're more artisan papers, but it's okay. It's totally worth it. And when they're 12 by 12, it's nice because I can just cut them down. I have one of these paper cutter thingies, so I can cut them down to the size of these drawers. Um, obviously, these drawers do not exceed 12 inches on any one size, so it's easy. So that's what I want to talk to you guys about today is easy decoupage. Now, hear me out. I know that it's so funny. So some of the brand ambassadors and I were talking about different things in our industry and how they're almost taboo or treated as if they're, um, I don't know, furniture art religion. And decoupage is one of those things. So I know you guys all have your methods. That's okay. I have mine and I'm going to share that with you today. So just be open, come with open hearts. Um, you know, don't say that your method is better you know it's whatever works for you guys i'm just here to show you the way that i do it okay are we good all right <laughs> so um i have my sheets already cut out and we're going to be using dixie bell's top coat so the top coat is more than just top coat it can also be used to decoupage which is really neat a lot of the dixie bell products can be used in multiple ways other than just their um, you know, intended use, their labeled use. So I'm gonna be using that. I already got two drawers going. Um, let me take this one out and show it to you because the light is reflecting so you can get a better idea. So it's kind of like black with like a gold foil design, okay? And this one is done, here's my paper. So I just thought these were so cool. So as I go along, I'm going to take a second, check your comments and say hi. But as I go along, if you guys do have questions, go ahead and drop them. I'm open. I'm here and I'm ready. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. So many people saying hello from all over. Hi, it's good to see you. Thanks, Jane. Jane says she loves my videos. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing. Bet always shares. Um, hi, Stacey Davis, Jason Skinner. I love to see familiar Faces. Yes, bet. Exactly. Whatever works, right? Whatever gets you there. <laughs> so, you know, that's a good question. Dixie Bell, can you answer that? Josie wants to know, can you do it with Gator Hive? I have actually not tried it with Gator Hive yet. So that's a really good question. Thank you for asking. Dixie Bell, can we do it with Gator Hive? Okay. So we're going to talk about that. Tiffany says, I can't ever get the paper to stay down and always foils up. So, this paper right here, let me see if I have, yeah, I have this one cut out already for this other drawer. See how thick that is? Oh, I wish I hadn't done it because my trick to that is to get the back a little bit wet with my mister bottle and just let it sit for a sec. And something about getting it wet makes it a little bit more pliable and um, the material that I'm using today, which is the top coat to absorb better to keep it from curling up. My edges do sometimes curl up a bit. I will have to sometimes go in there and add a little bit more, you know, around the lip, which I'm going to show you, but hopefully that tip works. I would not use water on like, say these. So this is closer to like a tissue paper. I wouldn't add water to like a tissue paper because it's just going to shred up. But those thicker scrapbook pages, just put a little bit of water on it. I've been doing that for years. And honestly, I don't have, if you guys can see it, I don't have a single bubble or a single wrinkle. Okay, 
So I'm gonna open the drawer. I buy these little needle nose, curved no nose, needle nose things. They're great for opening drawers. And I'm just gonna jump in. So, I guess, make sure I cut these in order according to size. So this is gonna go here. Okay, I've already got them pre-cut down to size. And hello, you guys keep talking to me. Everybody's saying hi as they're jumping on. Yeah, Tiffany, good question. Good question. The gator hived. I'm gonna, you know what? I think I'm gonna experiment with that and see. I, I don't see why it wouldn't work, but I can't say with confidence that it will work because I have not tried it, okay? Like, I don't even know who came up with the decoupage with top coat. Somebody somewhere experimented and thought, ah, you know? So I would encourage you guys to experiment and do the same. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I have, so I'm dipping my brush into, I know you can't see it, so I'm dipping my brush. I'm using flat top coat, the clear coat, okay? I'm not using the shiny, no reason, it's just what I grabbed off the shelf. And I'm gonna put a generous amount on my drawer. And I'm really gonna focus on the edges because that's where I seem to always have the trouble of it wanting to lift up. Okay, and that may look that may look like a lot. But watch. So I'm gonna put this on here, okay? And let me move the camera. Because I know my head is gonna get in the way. There we go. All right. And like I said, I already have these pre-measured and pre-cut. Just gonna try to line it up. Okay, so I have it on there. Just try to shift it hair. There we go, okay. So it's on there. Now I have to smooth it out, okay? So sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, this particular paper, um, it, again, it's more like a cross between regular paper and tissue paper. So I'm not wanting to use anything super, I guess, abrasive as I'm smoothing it. I'm just using my hand but I do keep some of these handy, just like a spatula, something that's flexible is nice. I could use that. I just, I'm afraid that I'm gonna tear the paper. So apparently I'm using it now, but I'm being very gentle with it because again, this paper is a little bit more delicate than that. Yeah, and so I like using my hand just cause I can feel it as I go. Okay, and I'm really making sure as I, um, spread it out that I'm pressing as I come along those edges. Because that's typically where I have the most trouble of it lifting up. So I know that you can't see it, but I do have a little bit of, because I did put such a generous amount on the drawer of the top coat, it's kind of spilling out around the edges, that's okay. I just wipe it back with a wet rag, okay? Pretty simple, right? And now I'm just putting a focus on making sure that my edges are all flush with the drawer. And I usually, so there's the hole, I can feel the hole for the hardware right here. I usually just take my finger and kind of press that in a little bit just so um, air doesn't get trapped around where the hole is going to be and then later on I'll just take my drill and just drill through it all right so that's how I do it pretty simple right we're just gonna let that let that rest for a bit this one I did about 15 minutes ago and I did notice that let's see See if I can find it. Yeah, just on my edge, I was just a little bit long. I know it's probably hard to see. Hopefully you can. Just a pinch long. I can take some sandpaper once this is totally dry and just sand that back. And I'm going to give that a few more minutes before I show you how I do that because I just want to make sure that it's pretty dry before I go tearing into it. Okay, let me look at your comments and then I'll do another drawer. Claudia wants to know, is uh, thicker paper better or thinner? It really just depends. You can decoupage both. So as I said earlier, this is definitely a thicker paper. Um, here's another part of it that I have here. And 
See how almost stiff that is? This is a much thicker paper. You can decoupage with it. Um, obviously I did here. For me, it's easier with the thicker type papers to get them wet with a little bit of water, let it sit for a bit, get my substrate prepared with the medium that I'm using, in this case, top coat, and then put it on. Hopefully that helped. Hi, Mary Ann. Thank you. Let's see. So to recap, Nancy, the paper that I'm using, I got from Joanne Fab Fabric. They called this their new artisan paper, and it feels more like um, thick tissue paper. So notice how I did not go over these drawers yet with a coat of top coat. So we're going to do one underneath, okay, to get it to stick to the drawer. And then we're going to do one over the top. I typically will wait for it to dry. Got a little bit of a bubble there. Okay, so I'll typically wait for it to dry before I go over it in top coat to seal the outside of the paper. Um, my reasoning from this is just really trial and, and error. I, when I have done it too quickly with any of the mediums, personally, when I've done it too quickly, so I did the bottom, I slapped it on, if I went over it right now, I feel like that's where it starts to create bubbles. I like to let the undercoat of the top coat cure for just a bit, long enough so it dries and the paper is good and on there before I put another coat. So that way I don't risk it bubbling up. Does that make sense? Sherry likes the color. If you guys are wondering what color I'm using here, this is Bunker Hill. So this is one of Dixie Belle's many varieties and shades of blue. Candy wants to know, is top coat different from clear coat? It's the same thing. So this is top coat, which is clear. I'm not using glue, Donna. I'm using top coat. So let me do another drawer, okay? Let me do another one for you guys. Same thing. I'm going to pull this out, okay? And make sure I've got the right size piece of paper here. Yep. So that I've already got my paper pre-cut and I'm just going to take a brush, some clear coat and slap it on this drawer. And as I did earlier, I'm going to do a generous amount. I don't want to risk putting too little and having um, parts of the paper not want to stick. So I always personally do a generous amount. Okay. It's okay, the excess is gonna um, come out from the sides and I'm gonna wipe them off. So, piece of paper, make sure that I get it nice and aligned. And I'm having trouble. Sorry guys, if my head's in the way. There we go. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So as I did earlier, I got it on there. I made sure that it was level and exactly where I wanted it. And this paper, by the way, as I'm seeing it come together, I'm sitting here, my heart's doing this. It's so pretty, okay? And I'm just gonna use my hand to smooth it. You can use a different tool. I'm using my hand because this paper is a little bit more delicate and I just don't wanna risk tearing it. Okay, so I'm just making sure that it's nice and smooth that there are no air pockets underneath. And, you know, it's, it takes me a bit, you know, I don't just slap it on there, do a once over and move forward. I like to really take the time to feel it and spread it around, to put a focus on my edges, to make sure that it's going to be on there and on there good because the last thing I want is for these to be sitting next to somebody's bed and the paper just kind of wilts down like a, like a sad flower petal. <laughs> okay. I'm really putting the focus on the edges, like I said, just kind of letting it wrap around, okay? I'm going to take my wet towel and I'm just going to wipe away 
just a little bit that kind of sweeped out around the sides. And again, as I showed you earlier, I like to take my finger and just kind of press into where I know the hardware hole is for two reasons, because it's gonna help me to make sure that I don't have um, air pockets around where that hole is. And also I can see where the hole is when I go to drill it out later to add my hardware. What do you think? Simple, right? Not a hard project whatsoever. I've got the bunker hill on the bottom. I'm not doing anything fancy to the paint. I want the drawer fronts to really be the focal point of my project. So I've got bunker hill going down here and I'm just adding some decoupage to the drawer fronts. It's an inexpensive project, which is nice um, because like I said earlier, I just went to Joanne and, and grabbed uh, some, some paper. The other thing is while I'm letting this dry, see it's really hard, I can see I have just a couple of bubbles. I'm gonna smooth them out, but then I'm gonna walk away from it. Sometimes what I find in my decoupage career is it might lift up a little bit as it's drying, um, I try my best to get them all, you know, any kind of pockets smoothed out now, and then I don't want to spend the next 15 minutes messing with it. Um, I'm not really sure the science behind it, but it does seem like if I mess with it too much, I'm going to start to get crinkles. If I just let it do its thing, some of these air, the pockets, the bubbles are going to just actually naturally smooth themselves out as it cures. Thank you, Aaron. Bowtie guy. Aaron's the bowtie guy. <laughs> Uh, Aaron told uh, Leah, Rex, and I yesterday that he gets referred to as the Bowtie Guy, and I just think that's so cute. Hi, Rachel, you caught me live. Rachel was concerned that she wasn't giving uh, live notifications. Deb, I am not a local retailer. I'm a brand, ambas and what, what, what? a brand ambassador, so I don't retail the paint. Um, I just show you how to use the paint and products. If you go to um, the Dixie Bell website, the link is up in the description. Um, if you go there and there's a um, tab, a drop down tab, I think for find your local retailer. You can put in your zip code and you can find your retailer that way. I do believe there are some in Chandler or in the east side area. Thanks, Bet. Okay, Amber. Not easy, but it will fray and bubble sometimes. It just takes practice. Yeah, so I gotta tell you guys, I'm just gonna share this with you. My very first decoupage product project, I need to slow down. I swear my mind runs faster than my mouth. Um, oh my gosh, I remember I did this white table and I just, I wanted to try it and I was scared. I think I sold the table for like $30 because I was like, it was an experiment. I just wanted to see if I could do it. And it was a crinkly mess, but the person that bought it liked it anyway. And, I just, I didn't give up. I kept going. I kept going. And, you know, I've been doing this now for, or at least uh, Lotus Theory has been in existence for, I think, four years, going on five, something like that. And um, it's a whole lot of practice. I've used different kinds of papers. Truly, that is the best way I can say for you guys to learn is trial and error and experiment. Good question. Is it Elena? Will you clear coat over the top of the paper when it dries? I will. I will. So as I explained earlier, I did not want to do it too soon. I want to give the undercoat a chance to get hard and for the paper to grip to the, the drawer front. But yes, I'm going to go over it in clear coat. Good question. Candy, also a good question. Can you do the same on the sides of the drawers? Do you use something stronger on the sides? Someone, um, yes, someone used wallpaper paste. So there's totally different mediums. I'm not saying that this is like the way to do it. It is a way to do it. And yes, you can. Um, on the sides of the drawers, I guess if you're just doing it on the wood, I personally, personally would probably give them a nice scuff sand first just to really give the side of the drawer some tooth so that the top coat or whatever medium, whether it's wallpaper paste, top coat, whatever, has um, something to grip onto and, you know, be the glue for both the side of the paper and the drawer side. Is that so? Blue is a 2020 color, uh, predicted color for design interior. Nice. Well, then I guess these babies will sell quick. <laughs> All right. So I just want to show you now. I'm going to grab a piece of sandpaper. Bear with me, okay? So I just have a, just some 220 sandpaper, okay? Just grabbing like a scrap that I have laying around. I'm going to take this out because I showed you earlier that 
I overestimated just, I mean, just a hair right there. And I don't want as, you know, whoever is the proud owner of these nightstands to, um, you know, open and close the drawer and that paper to snag and then it to lift up. So I want this to be gone so that that's not an issue. What I do is I will just take some sandpaper. Again, I reached for 220. I need something strong enough to cut through the paper, the decoupage paper, but also not shred through it. So I will go for like a 220 grid, okay? Good question, Sue. Can you do different finishes over that after top coating? What do you mean? Give me your example. Um, I mean, yeah, you can. You can definitely paint over it if that's what you're asking. You can wax over it, etc. Especially like if you're talking about wax, perhaps. Um, the clear coat that I'm using is flat. So that complements or that goes really nicely with the matte in the wax. Okay, so where was I? I just want to take away that little bit, okay? And I'm just going to gently sand away just that bit, okay? And again, this particular paper is pretty delicate, so I'm not putting a lot of force behind it. And I'm taking my time. And I'm really just making sure that I'm, I don't have overlapping paper and therefore, you know, the potential for it to snag and get ruined in use, okay? So I did, I did it there. You can see a little bit of the raw wood. In this particular instance, it's okay. Um, actually, Sue, here's an example for your question. Um, I'm going to top coat this once I'm ready. I'm going to top coat this. I can go back over that with paint if I choose to. So to answer your question, yes. <laughs> and I'm just feeling to make sure that I don't have any other edges that are lifting up. Another thing that I could do if I wanted to, and I've so done this, I, I wish I were working on this type of project to show you, but maybe I'll keep it um, in the bank for a future project, is I will take some stain, okay, I might totally go over this like and just rough it up totally around the edges and then i will take some stain and just gently go over some of the edges and let it bleed into the paper just a hair and it creates like a burnt paper look i wish that's what i was doing today i wish i had thought about that but you know my design is already set um but that would have that may have looked cool okay all right let me look and see if we have questions. Okay, actually, and, and one thing, so let me see, that might just be, yeah, that's just where the wood is raised a little bit. Um, if I do come back to this and I'm like, ooh, I've got some air bubbles, I can take like a really sharp razor, um, something like an X-Acto knife. So I don't have one, but imagine this was an X-Acto knife. And I would come, say that this was an air bubble. I would kind of come this way underneath it just puncture like the tiniest hole, but I'd have to do it gently, okay? And then I could um, just add a little bit of top coat and rub it in and you wouldn't even notice. Okay, but don't come in with like full Hulk straight, strength or you're gonna shred up your paper. Yes, Sue, so Sue is thinking gilding waxes. Yes, you can. And that's actually a possibility. There may, there may be some gilding wax happening on this. I'm not sure. You drip on your boxes. Um, elaborate for me, Rachel. What boxes? Do you mean like excess dripping and making a mess or? Talk to me, clarify. I'd love to answer your question. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, Daphne, I'm gonna definitely do an extra coat to seal the paper. And then I spray my top coat. So I'm gonna brush on some coat, just a coat to seal the paper. And then I'm going to come in with my sprayer and just top coat the whole thing with a couple of coats. Good question. I did. 
So Debbie's late. I'm using clear coat flat. I'm glad you asked Debbie because anybody else might be wondering too. Do you guys want me to do one more drawer or do you think that we're good here? Hello, Patricia. Uh, Patrice. I need some water, you guys. I need some water. Hold on. It's like 170 here. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, Daphne. Oh, oh drawer boxes. Okay. Um, oh, it jumped. You're welcome, Debbie. Um, drawer boxes and paint drips. So I... I always keep a wet rag, no matter what I'm working on, no matter what I'm doing, I always keep a clean, wet shop rag next to me. And as I'm going and as I'm doing it, I've just been wiping off the drawers. Okay. So I think, yeah, Daphne, right. And again, you guys, I just got this paper from Joanne. So I did not have to invest in any like huge roll of paper. It was very inexpensive and it's fun. There's variety, you know, I picked two different paper types. So there's the top one. Um, again, there we go. Now you can see it better because I like to mix patterns. And so I thought those two complemented each other nicely. All right, so can you give me help with what to do with a piece with a set uh, you've sanded it a lot and the drawer doesn't fit and scratches on the sides on the top of the drawer. You know what, Dana, I'm going to say, go ahead and inbox me for that because I have a feeling that that's going to be uh, inbox me. And you know what? Send me some pictures. That would be helpful for me. I just want to make sure that I answer your question properly. And I also want to stay on task here. So I'm going to do one more drawer because I do know that you guys, um, there's some of you that have popped in late. That's okay. Welcome. And I'm going to do this one more drawer. Okay, because why not? I might as well give you guys the whole, the whole piece. Okay, so I've already got my paper measured out. This is going to go here. I'm going to start by slathering a generous amount of the top coat. In this case, I'm using flat onto the drawer. I really make sure that I put a focus on the edges because I want to make sure that it's gonna stay and not curl up around the edges okay so generous amount so generous that i got it on my hand i've already got my paper cut let me bring this down so you guys can see a little better okay and i'm just gonna hopefully you guys can see i'm just gonna put it on there line it up And, oh, it's so hard to do it from this angle, but I want you guys to see it. So, all right. Okay, so I got it lined up the way that I want it, and I'm just going to use my hand. I'm going to smooth it out. I'm using my hand because this particular paper is a little bit more delicate than other papers, and I don't want to um, tear it fray it, anything. So I'm using my hand because it's just easier for me to control the pressure. Okay. I do have some top coat leaking. Okay. That's where the wet rag comes in. I can just wipe it back. It's not a problem. Okay. So again, as I smooth, I really put a focus on making sure that I don't have bubbles. So that's all the, the other nice thing about using my hand, I'm able to feel for bubbles, okay? And I also make sure that I put a nice focus on the edges. Notice how I'm kind of curling my hand around. I wanna make sure that my paper is on those edges good so that I don't come back and have like lifting up curling paper. Okay. Honestly, I think the longest, the thing that takes the longest is cutting everything out and measuring and all of that. This part, I mean, you see how easy this is? It's like, boom, done. Something beautiful that doesn't take you a week to complete. And it doesn't break the bank either. And again, I feel for the hole, the hardware hole, and I just like to press it in, okay? 
I want to make sure that, you know, the edges around where that hole is, is nice and down there too, like adhered. Okay. And then I just let it set. So I think this one's good enough to go. Let me make sure my edges are good. Let me just show you this one last thing. And then I think we'll be done here. Okay. So this one I did, what time is it? So I did this like 40 minutes ago. I could have put a coat of top coat over it sooner. It's dry. I can feel that it's on there. It's not going anywhere, but I just wanted to make sure that it was good and dry and that we got through it. So I'm going to go ahead right now and just put a coat of top coat over it. Okay. And I'm definitely doing it a little bit neater than I did earlier with the underneath, you know, I did just kind of slap it on there. Okay. So that's going to dry. It's going to dry clear. Let me just do what I did earlier. I'm just going to wipe up just a little bit where I went over the edges. Okay. And let me bring the camera in because I know there's some glare. So that'll dry, that'll dry clear, and it'll dry hard. So you can kind of see the two. So this is a dry one, and then that one, or not dry, but it doesn't have top coat, and then this one does. So hopefully that gives you guys some perspective. Okay, and then I'm going to let it dry, and then, yeah, if I wanted to go and add wax over it, I can. If I wanted to go and add gilding wax over it, Glaze. Maybe I want to paint the edges and then let the paint kind of blend around the edges. I can do all of that. Okay. <laughs> Sherry, thank you. <laughs> Good question, Patrice. Um, where are my knobs? I don't know what I did with my knobs. They're somewhere. Oh, there they are. Nope, those aren't it. I don't know where they are. Oh, where are you? I there we go. Patricia wants to know what you guys are probably like, what is she even talking about? Sorry, I clicked the wrong comment. Where are my knobs? Oh, there they are. Here, I'll show you. So these are what the original knobs that came with. One, ah, one of my knobs has like a weird oval shape. I'm not sure why just one is oval and the other nine are round, but that's the knob that it came with. I don't know if I'm going to stick with those. I might. I mean, they're, they're pretty. So just imagine, right? But, you know, the design that I'm giving it is handsome. Oh, and I didn't tell you the top. I'm going to do some gel stains. So see how I got those tops sanded down? I'm going to do gel stain. I love a wood stain top. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do espresso or colonial black, but either way, Dixie Bell's No Pain Gel Stain will be used on those. And for the record, I did not necessarily have to sand them down to raw wood to use the gel stain. I did because they were kind of a hot mess. That old finish needed to come off. Okay, do we have any other questions? I think that we're good. Thanks, Dixie Bell. Dixie Bell likes the knobs. Okay, so my paper's on here. I'm feeling really good about it. I don't have weird crinkling and air bubbles happening. Simple, okay? I know there's many methods. Some people like to gra uh, grab the, an iron, one of those shop irons, and, and give it a nice ironing. I've actually never used that method. Um, it's really whatever works for you. Today, I just wanted to show you what works for me. Um, I think that we're good. I think that you guys have a nice glimpse of how it's going to look and hopefully I'll be able to get these done pretty quickly and post the final product. It will be on my page. So if you're watching from Dixie Bell, join me. My link is up in the description. I am Bianca of Lotus Siri Designs. My link to follow me is in the description. You can also order this clear coat and find your local retailer using the link up in the description. You can have it shipped to your door or you can go find it at your local retailer whatever works for you. Thanks, Tammy. Tammy says I'm creative. So you guys, um, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for um, really engaging me. So many comments, so many comments today. I really appreciate it, you guys. 
And I will see you guys next week. I'll be back Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And we'll go over something fun and cool again. Okay? Thank you, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.